So my daughter does these tournaments out of town. And whenever we go to a new city, I always want to look up the record stores and see what's there and see what Genesis or Phil Collins treasures I could find. You know the drill. I've taken you on many different video tours of flea markets and record stores and antique fairs and all sorts of stuff. And we found some really great stuff. I've usually found a bootleg or something pretty rare in almost every outing that I've had. And so this past weekend, I was in a different city. I found three three record stores and I thought for sure I'll find something. I'll get lucky. And maybe even like, you know, the thing is you go out to these places and you're like, I could either spend zero dollars or I could spend $200, you know, if you find like a treasure trove. I mean, there was one time, one antique fair I went to where a guy had cleaned out his Genesis collection, his rare Genesis bootleg collection, because his wife was a hoarder and he wanted to encourage her to get rid of her stuff. And so he got rid of some of his stuff uh, to make it fair. Anyway, so I stumbled upon that collection and I could have spent maybe three or $400 if I had bought everything. And I just picked and choose like one or two things. That's where I got that copy of the hottest ticket bootleg. Anyway, so you always have the potential of finding like hundreds of dollars worth of treasure, but you also have the potential of finding nothing. And that's kind of what happened this time. Although I did find one thing I'll show you in a second. Let's roll the tape and then I'll show you what I found. It was okay. Just okay. A big shout out to our patrons, as always. Thank you so much. Look at this weather. This is the first thing I want to show you. This is what I'm dealing with. This is for you, by the way. I'm going out in this treacherous snow just to make content. The first place was closed. It said online that it would be open. So now we have to drive all the way across town to the other place. There's three places we're going today. And I don't know what they're like. I've never been here before. This place, this place was really cool. I imagine this little village here would be cool in this summer right now it was just cool not it was cold not cool anyway very nice place very sweet people who own this place we chatted up for quite a long time this is a peter gabriel um uh, bootleg 58 dollars canadian it's uh it's okay it's okay huge collection of cassettes um i didn't get a chance to go through them all i really should have i, I get so thinking about phil and genesis um when I'm doing this, that I just forget to look through all the tapes in general or all of the stuff in general. Like I suck at just browsing and you'll see in this video, there's stuff that I just completely miss. Um, there was one gem in here. There's a little Peter Gabriel section. And then this was the actually the only Genesis tape they had. So I'm gonna grab it, um, but that was it. This store was really cool, really beautiful, but didn't have much of what I was looking for. They just had like, good copies of Genesis records, which, you know, some store owners, they want to just have quantity and other store owners want to have a little bit of quantity, but more so quality. And I, I could tell that this place was small and just su had some of the really, um, just had good condition versions. There's IO, uh, $90, eh? isn't that nuts? Uh, seconds out, you see some of these here. Sorry, I didn't pull them out. Uh, seven inches through these walls, which I didn't get because it's the first place I'm going to. So you kind of like, well, should I keep searching? Was that a take me home? Did I miss a take me home? Anyway, grab this from Genesis to Revelation. I do need it in my collection. Not the biggest score ever, but we're back out to store number two and uh, Encore Records. And it's a uh, look at this day. Just look at this. This was a gross day. I don't know where you're from, but I, I don't dig these kind of days. This place was bizarre, mostly CDs, uh, pretty good Genesis CD collection. Although I think I've told you this in the past, I don't currently have a CD player. The one in my car is broken and that was the only one I used. And so I'm not really looking for CDs right now. Although they had some good ones. They're all pretty high price, price like the nineties. But um, yeah, I think I will maybe get back into CDs. Most of these were Steve Hackett's but I'd like to find a nice CD player. There's a new CD player that's like, looks really modern and cool. The other weird thing about this place, and I mean, it's not for everyone. For other people, they'd really like it. Oh, did I just, I am so distracted. I That was, I think, that one of the selling them by the pounds, the new ones. I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. Okay, back to that first store. This was a cool place. Oh man, I, I just realized when I watched this video, that uh, I missed out on that 
uh, 75th anniversary Atlanta Records selling England by the pound. It was probably 120 bucks. I don't know if I would have bought it, but man, I didn't notice that I missed that. I have one of the clear versions of selling England by the pound. I would maybe sell that to get to help me afford the new Atlantic Records one. So anyway, we're here in the G section of these $5 bins. I was checking to see if this was one that had Phil Collins on it, but no luck. Um, you might know some of these records. Let me know in the comments below if you would have grabbed one of these. Nothing really um, stood out at me. Anyway, that store that I was at previously only had new records. They didn't have any used vinyl that I could find. Maybe they did just hidden, but it was just new and CDs. That's kind of bizarre, but respect. I, I like record stores that have a niche, that have something different. So we'll head to the C section here and see if we can see any Phil Collins stuff. Some cool stuff. Again, you know, when I'm filming these videos, all I'm thinking about is the content. I'm thinking about not getting caught filming in store, thinking about finding gems for the channel. And so actually really, the next city I go to in a couple of months, I need to almost like film for the channel and then stop and then go back into the store and, and shop for myself because I really, and maybe even just kind of, kind of like go through the store just looking and then come back and do the same thing, but to film it. You know what I mean? I do like the surprise, catching the surprise on camera, but I totally missed that selling England by the pound being the 75th anniversary one. I've never seen that in the wild. And so I'm just kicking myself now for like not taking the time to go through all those cassettes in the first store. Uh, some miscellaneous stuff here. Nothing Genesis. Um, oh, up here we got some Genesis. This was all the usual suspects. Again, I think when I was looking back at this video, I realized there was some stuff here I, I maybe would have grabbed. Um, I'm always looking for duplicates for to take up to the cottage. And so um, there was one here when I was editing this that I thought looked interesting. Um, I, I have no interest in that those various versions of from Genesis to Revelation. Um, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of something else. I was hoping we'd get lucky. Maybe I'm thinking of the... Oh, I know what I'm thinking of. It's coming up soon. So they kind of categorized some other Genesis solo stuff. <clears throat> Soundtracks by Tony Banks. Look at this, $7. I, I should have got that for the cottage. That's a beautiful, I would own two of those. Um, I don't know any of the other Anthony Phillips stuff. I should have grabbed it though, eight bucks. Should I have grabbed that one? Let me know in the comments which Anthony Phillips records I should grab. I have just uh, Geese and the Ghost and uh, Wise After the Event. Anyway, going through the C section and we did not find any Phil Collins stuff. That maybe would have been back over in the Genesis stuff, but sometimes he gets his own section as well. So I wasn't quite sure. He's usually next to Coldplay. <laughs> um, and no luck there. Anyway, thanks for coming with me, as always. Oh, I totally forgot to mention, the city I was in was in a town called Kitchener, uh, also known as Waterloo. I don't know really what the difference is or which one is which in Ontario, Canada, which is really meaningful because I believe that was the second place that Phil did his um, frontman debut with Genesis back in 70, 76. And so, I was while I was like cooking around Kitchener looking at record stores I was interested in like where is the venue you can let me know if you're from that area in the comments below I believe it was at the University of Waterloo so I'm not sure what theater that was or where it is I think we all talk about London was the first show the second show was Kitchener but I believe it may have been Waterloo again in the comments you can let me know the difference and what that venue was um, and maybe we'll go check it out one day Okay, so you probably saw it from the video, unless you didn't catch it. All I scored was this from Genesis to Revelation. Not bad. It's actually not bad. The funny thing is, let's take a look, a little tour around here. Uh, anybody have a copy of this? this? is London. By the way, I was reading about this. DECA, it started as DECA. And then I believe, um, oh man, what's the story here? I think it's MCA or RCA that it evolved into. But like 
for some reason, it was London Records over here. I can't remember. For some reason, it was London Records in North America. There's a story. Anyway. Plain and simple. This is made in Canada. London Records. Very similar to the one I have. Um, I have this on vinyl. That looks exactly like this. And I'll tell you what. I paid $6, $5 for it. There was a... You saw that 7-inch of... Um, through these walls. I didn't get that. I'm not a huge seven inch collector, but I kind of like feel like I'm going to be collecting them anyway. Might as well just start grabbing them now. Um, anyway, I, so I, I didn't get that because it was the first store and I thought maybe I'd find more stuff. And so I wanted to save my money. Um, but I did want to get this because I am cl completing the collection. You saw me get this at a flea market last summer. Uh, and so that was a really cool one. So I do like want to complete all the way up to calling all stations, which does exist on cassettes. It's really hard to find. And recently I picked up Turn It On Again, The Hits. And so I think I am getting very close to completing just like these studio albums on cassette. And as we talked about last week, I do listen to cassettes a lot. And so it's not a terrible thing to get Genesis to Revelation. I listened to Side A. That's all I could really take. Um, really dislike this album. But it's cool to find it on cassette because I don't think you really come across it on cassette very much. Listen, I know you're disappointed that we didn't find anything cool. But I think that's what makes The Hunt all that more special. I think that's what makes it exciting is that there is that potential to walk away with nothing. And it's not, it's not guaranteed. If it was, if every time you went to a record store, we were guaranteed to find something new and exciting or something you didn't know existed or something you've been looking for for a long time, then every trip to the record store would be, would cost you a hundred dollars a month. It would be kind of almost a foregone conclusion that you find something. So the fact that you can go there and not find anything just makes those times where you do find something more special, more exciting. And so I've been really lucky and I'm going in a couple of months to another city. So I'll bring you along. Of course, I've been really lucky in the past finding some really incredible gems. My very, very first time uh, on a tournament weekend, I was away somewhere and walked into a store. And it was the very first time I had found Genesis bootlegs and I was exposed to Genesis bootlegs. I didn't even know they existed. And I found like four of them in one shop. So that was a start the car moment. So I've been very lucky before, and this time I was considered myself unlucky, although I did literally get something I probably would have reluctantly bought on Discogs one day. So I, I can't say it was all a loss, but it's okay to have those times where you don't really get anything huge. We had that time a couple um, a couple months ago at the fair where I didn't really get anything that great, although I got a, um, a cool face value, but then, and then at the very last second I found this. So anyway, um, there it is. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for exclusive videos, behind the scenes content, and to have your say on future topics before I film, have a look at our Patreon page. Thanks for watching.